and welcome to Brussels for Talking Europe on France 24. I'm at the European Development Days, an event hosted by the European Commission to reflect on development assistance and international cooperation. As you probably know, Europe still accounts for 50% of uh, international aid, uh, by far the most generous place in the world, but many will tell you it's probably not enough. Let me introduce you to my guest to my right, Marie Chantal Ouitonze. Uh, welcome to Talking Europe. You're the founder of the African Diaspora Network in Europe. You're also a parliamentary advisor at the European Parliament. To my left, uh, um, Fernando Frutuoso de Mello, uh, you are the uh, Director General of Europe Aid. It's the uh, General Department uh, for, uh, international, for, for Development and International Cooperation. And last but not least, we're also joined uh, by uh, Mr. Belete Tafere Desta. Now, you're uh, the Minister uh, of the Environment in Ethiopia, a country that has benefited a lot, I imagine, from uh, EU uh, aid. Uh, a country also we all remember which suffered tremendously particularly in the 80s with this terrible famine uh, that claimed the lives of 400,000 people. Uh, I will start with you uh, Mr Minister, what does your country actually expect from Europe? I think uh, my country as a, an old country and yet found it to be one of the least developed countries, maybe at the lowest it deserves for development. And this development uh, obviously uh, has to come from it is itself. Uh, it has to do its own effort. But in any case, as it is a least developed country, it obviously also has a gap or a limitation, uh, limitation because of the low economy or the poor economy, uh, it uh, really has the financial shortage, it has the technology shortage, it has also the knowledge shortage in this regard. So it is this kind of support which should or is expecting also from Europe because Europe definitely is opportunity to have this kind of potential. Fernando de Mello, as I said, you work for Europe Aid, uh, you, you work for the European Commission, obviously, which organizes uh, this uh, event. You've recently traveled to a number of uh, Portuguese-speaking countries in Africa. From what you see there, uh, what kind of projects really work, really make a difference? Well, I think, first of all, that we need to um, well identify what the situation is. We cannot come with a preconceived idea, arrive to a, to a third country and say, well, this works someplace else, it has to work here. It's not true. There's no one size fits all. There is no one size fits all, and there are objective situations, but also other dimensions, sociological dimensions that have to be seriously taken into consideration. That's why a good project is a project that is done together with the country and then we together with the populations that are concerned. The, um, and sometimes we fail for this kind of, of, of reasons. I, I, I remember a very famous story where we have, we have financed in, um, in, a, in a place in, in Central Africa, we, we have financed a water supply to a village because the women were going to the river to get water and to, to, to wash and things like that. And we thought, well, let's bring the water to the village. And we thought this was a great project. Two weeks later, the pipes were broken. And they were broken by the women. Because those two hours going to the river was the only moment where they could be alone together with each other. Mm -hmm. Because in that part of Africa, the husbands are at home waiting for the women to do everything. There's always a psychological element exactly. you have to take so into we, account. We have to take into consideration all, 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 the, all these elements. But what I can say, is that in today's world uh, we have much more differences than we used to have many years ago. 30 years ago, all developing countries were alike. Today they are all different. And the kind of replies we can do and we should do have to be adapted to, to, to the realities of, of each country. Marie Chantal Witton says, as, as Minister Desta said, it's all about closing the gaps. Uh, it's a very long process, full of frustration sometimes. Uh, 
in your view, what works, or maybe I should ask, what doesn't work? Um, I think that um, actually what doesn't work in, in terms of development uh, strategy is the lack of the adaptability of strategies and development policy to the context. I'm happy hearing uh, Mr. Fernando Frutuoso uh, highlighting that there is a need to adapt policies to sociological and um, local context because I think um, there is a need for developing countries to own their development. There is a need for ownership and for more involvement for local actors and um, they have to to be on the concern of the initiative aiming at developing their communities. Now, we're talking in abstract terms, but if we want to be more specific, in 2000, all UN members signed the uh, uh, Millennium Development Goals. The idea was to uh, eradicate poverty, to promote education, uh, women's empowerment. Now, these goals are expiring this year. They should be replaced by the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, for your country, Minister, what has this changed? Ethiopia is, I think, uh, one of the few countries which have managed to achieve many of these development goals uh, in the environment aspect, in the maternity aspect, the child health aspect, in education, and as well. Uh, this is because uh, there was a serious commitment made at all levels that we need to fulfill these uh, goals. Uh, already the country has established its own growth and transformational plan, which it is anticipating to reach middle income status by 2025 and in which it encompasses also the MDG goals. So it is uh, in this way we, we succeeded. Uh, of course, uh, as a, a continuation of this, we are also looking for uh, having a successful sustainable development goal. Uh, in this regard also we are now finalizing our GTP2 plan, which is consistent to the, uh, what is presupposed to be in the sustainable development goal. Uh, Fernando de Melo, it's very good, I guess, to have benchmarks to measure how far uh, we have achieved or we have delivered. Uh, in your view, is the glass half full or half empty? Well, I'm a professional optimist. I have to be working in development for so many years. So uh, I think it's, it's half full, honestly. We have very good pro pro progress in health. We have very good progress in re reducing poverty. We have very, very good pro progress in some aspects of e education. And I think that before having the, the result, the fact of, of having targets is important mm -hmm. because it drives policy. The fact that there is a target leads governments and leads agencies li like us to want to achieve them. And so this, this actually uh, uh, means um, more progress in that front. Of course, focusing on, 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 on the 8 million development goals may have distracted us from others. But in that front, we have managed to, to and do And what together. do you expect from what comes next, the sustainable development goals? Where do you think we should put a focus now? Well, I think one of the most important elements, of the two most important elements for me of the sustainable development goals are, first of all, in a, is a universal agenda. So it's applicable to everyone. So we must apply it to our countries as well. It's not only a question for the others, it's for all of us. And the second is the integration with, with the climate dimension which is a central dimension for the future of, of, of the planet. And as someone mentioned the other day, we have to do it because we only have plan A because we don't have a planet B either. So this integration is, is perfectly crucial and as a universal agenda, I think, can drive the, the willingness of, the, of uh, the different partners to move on. One of the targets, of course, is uh, gender equality, women's empowerment. As a woman, I guess this is something that is very close to your heart. Uh, are we seeing progress there? Uh, I think that uh, in many countries of Africa, um, women empowerment is really being um, a successful goal. I think there are countries like, like Rwanda, which is uh, the best country where uh, uh, women are represented in parliament. And I think that there are 
other countries that are working hard to treat this girl. I think that uh, um, the main group that are failing are more linked to the um, access to the public services because we still have in many developing countries um, areas that you have no energy, um, uh, you have no electricity, you have no water. I think the post 2015 development agenda have to focus on providing um, elementary access to public services and also to uh, sustain the, capa the capacity of government to be uh, the founder themselves, to, to be the founder of this uh, public uh, public services. Because I think that um, we are still uh, talking about aid after 40 years of cooperation between EU and developing countries. Um, I, would, I wish that we could talk in 2030 about um, non aid So I think the main focus about now... About cooperation, about trade? Yeah, maybe about yeah I think trade. that the main focus now will be uh, on working on aid, um, helping those countries move away from aid dependency. Because the, the world has changed. It's no longer the north against the south the rich against the poor. We live in a globalized world. Uh, nothing is black or white. Uh, I, I should ask you, what do, do you feel that this relation with Europe has changed? Do you feel that maybe you have uh, a less patronizing relation with your European counterparts? It is improving very well that the kind of cooperation we are having between the developing countries and the developed one or the north and the south is from time to time getting stronger and stronger and more uh, productive, I can say. But we have to also address the other side of the coin, which is uh, the problem of corruption, um, the lack of good governance in a number of countries. And I guess as a European policymaker, you want to make sure that Europe uses its soft power to encourage things like uh, respecting human rights, uh, fundamental rights. Yes, definitely. The, um, one of the most important tools that we use now is what we call direct budget support. So instead of financing this project or, or, or that project, we discuss with the, with, with the government of uh, policy objectives in some sectors, in the health sector, or in the education sector, or the tech sector of, of that one. And we fix benchmarks, both in terms of policies, but also in terms of public financing management, but also in terms of human rights. And we have a kind of uh, matrix that uh, covers all, all, all these elements. And we disburse against results. We don't, uh, it's, it's not against constructing the road or building that or that. No, it's against results in terms of, 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 of policy. And what we are seeing is that countries with which we, we use the budget support ap approach, governments feel more responsible for th what they, they are doing. And they, they are more accountable because the objectives and the benchmarks are there. And we have studies in four countries now where we have done budget support of, of the last years. And in those four countries, what we see is that those countries achieve faster the Millennium Development Goals and the indices of corruption are lower. And so I think this is a powerful tool that we'll probably use more in, in the future. Do, do you believe that you must attach strings to the aid and tell the governments you will get more if you promote human rights, if you promote gender equality? Uh, what I think, I think that aid conditionality is not a bad thing per se, because it, uh, it helps in promoting uh, freedoms, help promoting human rights, but I think that it has to avoid um, interference in um, local, uh, in local way of prioritizing local um, and national uh, strategies because I think as uh, uh, Mr. Fernando Frutuoso said mm -hmm. it, um, budget support is one of the tools that, uh, that help government to, mm -hmm. to be the, um, the main actor of their uh, own uh, policies. They choose themselves what they think is better, what they think is needed for their community and their, um, their countries. The concern of uh, humanity, nobody can object it at all. The concern of democratization is fundamental. 
the concern of corruption, we have to take it serious. But also, it is definitely uh, when uh, the countries themselves has taken it and own it itself, and accordingly, that this could be helpful. Uh, yes, it is not the piecemeal support that one country is giving to the other that would bring change. It is a complete programmatic aspect of support that would really ensure the development. Then in this regard, as government has taken its part and parcel of their development policy, included in their programs, and then in, in, in the integrated way, I think many of these African countries had succeeded through this. Very briefly, Fernando de Mello, as a conclusion, what will you remember from these development days? As you probably know, this is the biggest event on development in the world nowadays. We have um, almost 7,000 registrations, which means that mm, it is something that people are concerned about. We have people from all, all over the world here, which shows that the effort that Europe does in development is recognized, is useful, and, and people are interested and eager to, to discuss it. Fernando Frutuoso de Melo, I remind our viewers that you're the Director General of Europe Aid. We were also joined by Belete Tafere Desta, the Ethiopian Minister uh, of the Environment. And last but not least, Marie Chantal Louis Tomze, you're the founder of the African Diaspora Network in Europe. Thank you very much to all of you for having taken part in this edition of Talking Europe. Now, please stay with me. I return just after the news break in about 10 minutes on France 24.